When streaming a video over a network, we often think of Apple's AirPlay or YouTube's TV cast. This video will demonstrate how we can use RTMP with FFmpeg, Docker, and VLC to stream a video file over a local network with ease. Before we begin, I want to share this diagram to help explain how the streaming will work. We start with a video file in the MP4 format, stored locally on our computer. We encode this data with FFmpeg into a format that a media server will accept. We will run our media server with Docker, which will receive the encoded video data and stream it to clients with RTMP. Using VLC Media Player, clients will connect to the stream using a URL that includes the IP address of the server and the name of the video stream. Now let's set up our media streaming server in Docker. I have a directory open with VS Code and I have two MP4 files visible on the left side, which I'll use for testing later. But to set up this server, I'm going to create a Docker Compose YAML file. And in here, it's very simple. We're just going to define one container. So first line will be version. And then down here is where we specify our containers. I'll call this container streaming server. And the image we're going to use is from Docker. A link to this GitHub repository will be in the description. There are other ways to run it, but I found that Docker is the simplest as it pulls the image and gets everything running for us. All I have to do is expose a port. And the ports we want to expose are first the port for RTMP, so 1935. We'll map the same port from the host and the container. Uh, the next one will be 8000. And this is for a uh, admin dashboard, which we can access in the browser over HTTP. Another port you can also expose, but not needed for this video, is 8443, which I believe is for streaming media over HTTPS. But since we're only doing RTMP, uh, I'll, I'll list it, but I'll keep it commented out. This isn't needed. And that's it. This is our streaming server container defined. Now let's go ahead and run it. This is very simple, just docker compose up. And as mentioned before, it's really simple. It'll pull the image and then go ahead and start running it here. And now our media server is running locally on our computer in a docker container with the necessary ports exposed for streaming and management. Before setting up the Raspberry Pi to receive a video stream, I need to make note of what the media server's IP address is. On this computer, I can check by doing ifconfig en0, and this will tell me that my IP address is 242. You can also check in your settings. I need to know what this is, so the Raspberry Pi connects to the correct IP address to receive the media stream. Before setting up our Pi, let's ensure it has a network connection, a connection to a TV with an HDMI cable, and plugged into power. Now let's go ahead and set up our Raspberry Pi so we can receive media streams. This is the operating system I'm using. Any Raspberry Pi distribution should work. Make sure you have Python 3 installed. This is the version I'm using at the moment. And then with apt or apt, I'm going to install a couple extra dependencies. So sudo apt install. We're going to use vim to edit files, vlc, and then python3 vn to create virtual environments so we can install Python dependencies. After completing the install, you'll need to reboot your Raspberry Pi with sudo reboot. This ensures that VLC is installed. With the installation done, let's use what we've installed to receive the video stream on the Raspberry Pi. First thing I'm going to do is make a directory called receive stream and hop in there. Next, I'm going to make a file with vim called requirements.txt. And it's going to be a list of Python libraries that the Raspberry Pi needs to receive a VLC stream. And it's very simple. It's only two things. So first, it's going to be Python VLC. And the version we're using is 3.0.18121. And then we're also going to use, I don't know how to pronounce it, Pafy, P-A-F-Y. Uh, 055. 
With this done, let's make sure that the requirements.txt file is there. We'll cat the file to make sure everything is there that we need. Great. Now let's make a virtual environment to install these dependencies. So we'll do Python 3-m vn, and I'm going to make it inside a TMP. If you want your virtual environment to persist, maybe create it somewhere else, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now that the virtual environment is created, we can enter it by using source TMP vn bin activate. And now that the virtual environment is created, we can do pip install dash r requirements.txt. Now that the Python libraries are all downloaded, let's create a Python file to receive the VLC stream. So to create this Python file, we'll do vim, I'll call it receive stream.py. At the top of our Python file, we're going to import two things. First thing is sleep from the time library, like so. And then we're also going to import VLC so we can receive media. Next thing I'm going to do is create a variable that will have the string value of the URL where we want to receive media streams from. So like so, stream URL. Uh, the protocol is RTMP and then it's the IP address of the server that we made note of earlier. In my case, it's 192.168.1.242. And then it's the name of the media stream. So it's forward slash live and then forward slash my stream, like so. Next down here, I'm going to define a while loop. Make sure I had an end quote there. And then in our while loop, first I'm going to make a variable called media. And this will be vlc.mediaplayer. Like so, it'll take the stream URL as a parameter. Then we're going to start to play the media, like so, media.play. And what this does is it'll open VLC in the background as a background process. Um, and this is where the sleep function will come in because we want to make sure that that background process spins up and is ready to go before we check if the media is actually playing. Then the next thing we're going to do is create another while loop. So while media is playing, we're going to just sleep for one second. So the idea here is we'll define a media player variable which maps to the stream URL. We'll try to play the media, which is the equivalent of just checking if there's anything coming from the stream. And if there is, we'll just keep checking for the media stream. And then once it's done, we'll call media.stop. The reason why I'm using Python over a VLC command is because this continuous checking makes it really easy for us to stream videos to a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi will just continuously check, and if there's something there, it'll play it. So now our Raspberry Pi is ready to go, and I can initiate this Python script or initiate this checking, however you want to call it, by just doing Python receive stream.py. So while there is no stream playing, we'll be, we will get these errors, but once a stream is present, the Raspberry Pi should start playing it on the monitor that it's connected to. I'm back in my VS Code window, and I'm going to initiate a media stream with FFmpeg. This command that I've pasted is in the video's description. It's a pretty long FFmpeg command, but the only things we really need to focus on are the file path here. In my case, I'm going to use this test video one. And then the server name is going to be localhost since I'm going to run this command on the same computer that's running the container for the media server. So that's going to be rtmp colon slash slash localhost 1935 as the port. And then the name of the stream is live and then my stream like so. With our Raspberry Pi continuously checking for media streams, when I hit enter, the stream should appear on the monitor that the Raspberry Pi is connected to. We can see it works. And if I want to stop the stream, I can just stop the FFmpeg command with control C. We can see that the Raspberry Pi stopped showing the stream on the TV. And I can also stream a different video. So if I go ahead and change test video one to test video two and hit enter,
We can see that it works. And there you have it. Streaming video over a network with RTMP to a Raspberry Pi.